They were getting it in last night at the Daily Times, live from the newsroom with columnist Gil Spencer and Corey Brown, a member of the board of directors of the State Education Association, as they talked about what else the Chester schools. Here's an abbreviated version of what went down. The notion of we have got to be here for these mm-hmm. kids. We will figure it out. I mean, Chester Upland has been, this is not the first issue they've no, dealt with. Absolutely. And they have proven that they are going to be there for those children, regardless of what the clim- what the political climate is, regardless of what crisis of the day it is, that they're going to be there for those kids in that community. They're saying, you know, we have faith that our elected officials, that our, you know, that our, um, our school district, our board of directors, um, our teachers union can help bring some sort of, some meeting of the minds so that the children can continue to get what they deserve. Well, I mean, what, what do they, uh, what do they deserve? Uh, do they deserve a budget that can be struck and adhered to and something that the taxpayers, and you know, what do they deserve? It, Chester gets 70% of its funding from outside, from out, you know, people who don't live in Chester Upland School District, but they pay their own school taxes and they, you know, they say, look, we, we just don't, we, they see things as enough's enough. We, you know, a lot of money is going into Chester. What, what do you have to show for it? You have a lot of students leaving the district going to charter schools. Chester Upland is operating on a bare bones budget. Of they eliminated 40% of their teach certificated teaching staff and 50% of their support staff. But what does it tell you? I mean, that it's, they, that they it's had to do that, that and they, they still, they still have $106 million to, to spend. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense to people who, who, who look at the amount of money that's being spent and, that, and, and the fact, and we talked about this, I mean, you, you noticed this, is that, that the hiring went up. Hiring went up as enrollment went down. The numbers of, of well, part hires, of, part of the pro- you need fewer teachers if you have less students, or you should. And you should be able to downsize responsibly. Well, I mean, they have anything downsized. Close to that. Not responsibly. We need to focus on what's happening in January in Chester right now and where we go from here. Because I think too much time is being spent on, well, this person's angry and this person's angry. You know who needs to be angry? The class of 2012 coming right. out of Chester High School and Allied Health and the Sciences Program, right. Science and Discovery. Those children should be upset. The kids that should be upset are the kids who are looking forward to going in in September 2012. Where do we go from here? How do we plan for those children? How do we do it where we're meeting the, where we're meeting, where we're being fiscally responsible, yet we're meeting our um, constitutional obligation to educate those children? I, you know, what is the argument? Uh, and I, I haven't heard it yet. What I mean, we must educate children, and and we have an obligation to educate all children. But they're getting a pretty bad education right now by a, a, a many measures in the city of Chester, and they have for years. And that's why they people I choose just, voluntarily to leave the school district. That the people, people choose have to leave on their own, but. The, pe- the staff, the administration, the support staff are doing their best. Well, it's not good it's, enough. Well, let me finish my statement. They are doing their best with what they have. Chester doesn't get the job done, or hasn't. The Chester Open School District but hasn't getting the job more, done. But it takes more, excuse me, they are do- the teachers are doing their best. Because, Mr. Spencer, I would love for you to come into a classroom. I've been to class. And you can't look at, at a child as a problem. A child Pro- is having have difficulty. Well, we have adults with difficulties, right. but we don't label them. Why? We do our do. best. Well, that's <laughs> and that's not nice. <laughs> well, that I've is been not nice. But you know what? We can't expect our kids to come in and be respectful and feel that pride if people are labeling them as your problem. Your school is failing. We need to do everything we can to embody our students with pride of self, pride of community and with a determination to be successful. I mean, if we just pigeonhole them all based on a zip code. Well, I'm not. I'm pigeonholing the, the, the Chester Upland School District as a failed cannot. district. You cannot. You cannot. I think well, I it's can. irresponsible. You, you may, right. but it is my belief that we cannot pigeonhole a district and we cannot pigeonhole the children that reside in that district. We have to, we, the adults well, have to be the responsible. Well, the PSEA seem to think that this is sort of a standoff between them and the governor in this? It's not a standoff between us and the governor. Right now, we just need to do, we're trying to reach out to anyone right now who will listen to the problems. The governor has refused to release the funds, but that's not going to alleviate the problem. Mm-hmm. 
The problem is, is that there is a funding issue with this district, and there could be others down the line. That's right. We yeah. need to have an open dialogue with those responsible parties to solve problems, not to pass the buck. Well, Are you willing to include in that the idea that within that discussion there are some legitimate, real, fiscal numbers problems in the district? Clearly, I was not a math major, but okay. there are some numbers that just don't add up. That's why we need that open dialogue. We need to be able to sit down as adults, discuss the problem, and find some reasonable, reasonable um, resolution to this that does not compromise that does not further compromise the education of the children in that community. We have a responsibility. If the PSEA had the opportunity to tell Governor Corbett and Secretary Tamales one thing, what would it be? Please fund public education. Please do not handicap the districts across this commonwealth with unreasonable budgets. That we don't spend enough money on public education in this state let alone this country, right? Correct. And yet, we spend more than any other civilized country in the world. That you know, how much mean... is enough? How much is enough, especially when you see the outcomes, the educational outcomes that we are seeing in this country compared to the rest of the world, especially uh, civilized countries and, and, and you know, are we going to use, countries. Are we going to look at how we, how we operate here in the United States yes. as compared to how they operate in South yeah. Korea. We should compare it and see how we do and but see what we're spending compare. money on and how much we're wasting. Well, I think we're wasting some money in multiple areas. All right, to so be that's why you have a discussion. You. you have a political and we discussion have a, about we have a it. Discussion. And you set your priorities. But, and again, we can have discussions, but when you're making tough decisions, the children should not be the ones to have to carry that burden. I, I, have a, I think it's an ethical problem. Children don't ask to be born wealthy. Don't. So I mean, the question is that there's a you know there's fiscal sanity, and then there's you know the children need everything that we can put in front of them, and we you know you just got to be able to set a budget, be reasonable, come to some political accommodation about what is reasonable. But it's and not take it political. From there. And here's my and here's my issue with that, because you have people who are outside of the education field, setting policy, setting budgets, who honestly. The last time they've been in a classroom for any meaningful amount of time were the last times they were enrolled in so schools. So educators should be the ones who set the budgets for themselves? Not solely, but there should be some sort of, you know, information. You don't, have input, some, you don't think the PSE has any input on, on what the clearly education budget are? Clearly, if you looked, at, the, if you looked, at, Governor, if you looked at Governor Corbett's budget for the 2011-2012 school year, Clearly, we did not have as much influence as you think we did. No, no, I think I agree with you. Over the years, though, when you see the cost of education going up, uh, you know, but astronomically, you also, but have you, don't you think looked you had at? Some input but have you looked that? at? Have you looked at what Pennsylvania students have done with the investment in it? Yeah. Research says that the students in Pennsylvania have done. They have their scores in reading and math are tops in the nation. Was that right? Yes, I mean, sir. I can check that out. I, I, am, I implore you to. I implore you to. I'm looking to. forward to doing it. Tops if you go into our homepage, www. The one of the tops in the nation. Prior to these draconian cuts. I'll look All right, we've been talking about education, and we obviously are going to continue to talk about education, in particular when it comes to the Chester Upland School District.